team of engineers, pioneers, project managers, and mechanics. Working together, driven by detail. We're the foundation of the next generation. Grasping the opportunity to showcase our passion for precision, our understanding of the science of speed. We work hard, we push our limits, giving blood, sweat, and tears. And we want the world to know our names. Done on reaching the F1 in schools world finals in Singapore. What a brilliant location for it to be held. Enjoy the event as well. That uh, we will be joining you on Sunday of Singapore. We are the future faces of F1. We are F1 in schools. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. David Clark. What ya? Hello? Is anyone there? I, I'm not convinced. Is anybody there? Welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, the Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals for 2023. What a few days it's been. Um, have you enjoyed yourselves? Yeah. yeah? I hope so. Because in my mind and in the mind of the greats and the good and the VIPs and the dignitaries and the wonderful people we have at the front, you guys are all winners as far as we're concerned. Yeah? The fact that you have sweated, you have shown inspiration and perspiration, you have battled hard to get to the world finals makes you winners in our book. I honestly want to say, 
right from in here that I am so impressed. Every time I come to the F1 in Schools World Finals, every time I see what you've done in your pit displays and I watch on the webcast, which has been being live around the world tonight, I, I am so, so impressed with what you know and what you can do with that knowledge. So thank you very much for once again showing that F1 in Schools is the place to be and that the future of F1 is very safe as long as each and every one of you from your 68 teams finds a job in F1 in the future. And the VIPs down the front, there's a lot of very good talent here for the future, but I don't need to tell you that because you've been walking amongst them and you've been chatting to our wonderful finalists. So uh, congratulations, it's been a really busy day. I've just been with Oscar Piastri. Uh, he wants to wish you all the best tonight, especially the Australian teams. Yeah? He said, uh, he said, Australia are going to win it. I said, it's not like proper F1 where the same man wins every single time. I said, we actually have a bit of variety in F1 in schools. And the Australians, whilst having a strong contingent, uh, could be outclassed and outbattled. I don't know. The name of the winners that are going to stand on this podium are in the golden envelopes. And I've not even had a look yet because I want to be surprised and delighted as you are when we announce the winners. But what I do want to do is take a little photo and show the world just how many people are here and how enthusiastic you are for F1 in schools. So if you don't mind giving it a big cheer while I stand on the stage, one, two, three. Thank you very much indeed. I'll get the Digital Media Award one year, I promise. And thank you to everyone for being present here at the Resorts World Singapore uh, this evening. Thank you to all of our guests that are with us here in this magnificent ballroom. And thank you to Aramco, our partners for F1 in schools and our title partner as well. I mentioned you once, I'll mention you again. Thank you to everyone watching on the webcast around the world. It's great to have your company here with us tonight too. And um, to showcase F1 in schools and how great the contribution has been from each and every one of our competitors. Don't take my word for it. We've got three minutes of excellence to show you on the screen.
absolutely magnificent. <laughs> to all the members of our 68 competing teams, please stand up while we give you all a massive round of applause. Competitors, on your feet, please. And let's applaud our winners. Absolutely fantastic. And to all of our teams who have battled so hard, who have striven for success, and who have the drive and the inspiration, you can take your seats now because this message is for you. I'm Stefano Domenicali, President and CEO of Formula One. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to congratulate you on making it to the Aramco F1 in school world finals. It is great to see so many countries represented at the event and so many young people being inspired by Formula One. You can take pride in being among the best in the world at the F1 in school challenge. Education is at the heart of what we do. And without the talented and innovative engineers and personnel we have in F1, the sport you know and love will look very different. I hope you have enjoyed your time at the World Final. I look forward to seeing some of you this weekend at the Singapore Grand Prix and even more of you in the F1 paddle one day in your career. Avanti tutta, full speed ahead. All the best, ciao. Stefano will be there in the paddock waiting for you all when you arrive this weekend. Uh, but who's going and who's going with what trophies in their hands? Should we get on with the awards, ladies and gentlemen? I think we should. First up is the Knockout Award. We don't have a winner yet. We're down to two teams and it's time for the final. So please put your hands together for Tom, Amy and Sam to tell us about the Knockout competition. I was expecting something a bit more dramatic. I was told you've been practicing that, yeah? Oh, no, well, we didn't want to... Well, the teams have been so incredible, Crofty, coming through this honour. We didn't want to... Uh, disappoint. No backflips from you this year? <laughs> no, the Cypress team did all of that, but uh, that looked very dangerous. I think I was in shock. I watched on the video there. Amazing. But meeting all the teams and some of the celebrations that they've had have been phenomenal. Tell us about the competition then. The, the knockout is always fiercely contested because it's machine and it's pilots fused together. Yeah, it's got a bit of everything, actually. Uh, I think the Singapore Grand Prix's got a lot to live up to, uh, <laughs> but I know it will deliver. But yeah, Amy and I, we absolutely love meeting the teams, getting to know them, and seeing some of the performances. The worst part is having to tell a team, I'm afraid you are not going through, but the sportsmanship that we have seen has is, is been truly delightful. Yeah, we have had breakages, we have had missing mascots, and we have had pool parties, definitely. Yeah. This competition has been absolutely incredible. 68 I teams. I thought we were gonna ban talking about that. I didn't say anything. Okay, Tom. fair enough. Sam, tell us more about the pool party last night. I don't think that's something to say. I, I'm told it went on slightly late and that speakers may have been moved from one part of the hotel to the other. It doesn't want to answer that question, yeah. uh, Crofty, but no, the, all the teams just seeing their delight, all the nerves, all of those moments of their, are they going to get an award? Are they going to get to that? across the finish line. It's just been truly phenomenal to, to get to know them and lose voices. Everyone, I think, in this room has been tired and lost their voice at some point. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're still standing and still talking because you've got to introduce the two teams. I do indeed. So let's welcome out from the UK all the way into the final. It's Nightingale. <laughs> Who should we chat to first? Nightingale, is that the first finalist, Amy? Nightingale, we have been waiting for this moment all the way since January, I believe, to press this button for this final round of the knockout competition. Alistair, we don't get to speak to you. Come over here. <laughs> Let me get the mic. How are the nerves feeling? I'm a bit shaky. I mean, if I were to say that I was relaxed, I have a feeling I, I have a feeling people might think that I'm lying. So I'm going to be honest and say I'm a little nervous. However, feeling confident, 
I am, yeah, nervous. <laughs> and we know we had a lot of adrenaline going into this knockout competition, a little bit late for the first round, but you're here on time, perfectly ready. All I can say is good luck. Thank yeah. you. Uh, there was many techniques for how you can get the best and fastest reaction time uh, for Team Nightingale is have the adrenaline of running in two minutes before you're about to go on stage. Uh, I welcome the team, first time ever representing uh, Canberra at a world finals. I know what it means to you, 2 a.m., uh, morning meetings and final preparations going into this. What does it mean to be in a final of the knockout race competition? Oh, I think it means everything to us, really. It's nothing we expected. Uh, we just came here with our heads high, happy with the work we've presented, and it's brought us here. So. And uh, your driver, please name the driver. KC is going to be delivering. What makes him so good at doing what he does on track? To be honest, I'm not sure. He's just a bit of an animal. He puts the headphones in, the music turns on, and he's, he's out. He's ready. Uh, well, listen, he may be an animal as a driver, but Sam, you've got some stats for us before we send the drivers away. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm surprised how different these two cars look, but um, both are incredible. I've, I've said before, I love the innovation car. I love the innovation of uh, the big open front nose cone uh, and the Nightingale car as well is extremely sleek. I think one thing that comes to mind, there's a, a great book by uh, Gordon Murray about vehicle packaging, and this is summarizing that. They've got space for the canister, they've got space for the, the halo, the helmet, and the virtual cargo, and it all fits in perfectly. If we look at track times, it's pretty close, yet again. Um, reaction times, extremely close. These are best reaction times and best race times from day one and day two to find the optimum time that they achieved then. Um, I think seeing a, a P13 and a P11 team competing in the final is a surprise for both teams, but uh, I think it's extremely exciting. If you want to have a look at how the race is going to go, it looks like innovation are slightly faster to the, uh, the sector gate. That means maybe the car's a bit lighter, it's able to accelerate faster, uh, and then in the second half, uh, they are averaging the exact same speed. So it's going to take a good reaction team, uh, uh, time from Nightingale to get them off the line quicker and then get them over the line first. All right, well, I, I reckon we should send the drivers and the teams down uh, trackside. They'll be meeting Crofty. But just to double check, are there any teams uh, watching right now that are going to support the Australians? We've got any Australians in the house? I knew they'd bring the energy. And the team is supporting the UK. Best of luck to you. Get down there, trackside. And we will catch it. Yeah, drivers head on down there. Uh, Tom and Amy, Sam, thank you very much indeed. We need a partner to partner with us for the knockout competition, and we have one in the space of Pirelli, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage their motorsport racing manager, Mario Isola. Hello, mate. Good to see you. Good to um, see you. This is great, isn't it? We don't know who the winner's going to be. It's my first final, and I am shocked. shocked. About all these people, all this organization. It's great to see uh, this, this great feeling with young people, our future. This Very is happy the, to be here. This is the future, you know. And you need to go around to our pit displays to see what they've done with the wheels and, and the bearings and everything, because you I, might get a few secrets that yeah, you can Yeah, I, I will spend more time in in understanding what they are doing, because it, it's interesting to see. <laughs> well, it is. New ideas are always interesting. New ideas are always good. Come with me, because we, we've got a special job for you. But we're down to the final two. You know, it's, it's uh, Nightingale against Innovation. It's, it's like the real world, Pirelli against Bridgestone. Have you got any news for us on that one at all? <laughs> no, don't ask me questions about uh, war. Well, I, just, I just thought, I've got a few friends in. No, I we thought, are enjoying well, with, with well, them. we're enjoying it. We're, no, we're enjoying no, it more. No, no news for the moment, anyway. No news for the moment. Right, we've got a special job for you. Yeah. Um, there's a big button on top of the start uh, gantry. You're going to be the man that starts our knockout competition tonight. Okay. Yeah? And when you press the button in a moment, because Oscar's going to show you what to do, uh, then our two pilots, Alistair and KC, are uh, going to stare at the lights. Well, look, but don't stare. That's what Martin Brundle always said. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
He's got, he's got his headphones in already. Um, and when, it, uh, when the lights go out and away we go and all of that, you're going to accelerate the cars down the track and we're going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, not once but twice because we're going to swap the cars over so they each get a run in a different lane. And it is the overall time we're looking for here and the best overall time takes home the trophy. Sound like a plan? Let's go with heat number one. Photographers, don't move. Best of order in the house, please. Whenever you're ready, Mario, press the button. Whenever you're ready. We're racing. Good luck, guys. Oh, I love the thrill of competition. And it is lane two innovation that takes the first heat. Nice one. Well done. In a time of 1.297 seconds, uh, the reaction time, 0.148. When was the last time you reacted to anything <laughs> like that as quickly? I, I don't have any memory of reacting so quickly. <laughs> I think my reaction time would be about 14 minutes and 80 seconds, I think, on that one. Um, but that was absolutely fantastic. And you can see how close it is. You know, we, we, yeah. it, just like Formula One, we set rules and we set challenges, and the teams come up with a myriad of different solutions, and they all converge together in very similar times. Unbelievable. Yep. It's fantastic. What we're going to do now is set the cars up once again. And we have uh, our two start line officials to do that. Uh, Oscar and uh, also Vincent, who's looking very, very serious down there at the moment. So you've got a little bit to make up, but you can do it. It is possible. I should have really given you a microphone if I was going to have a chat, but you know that would have been a sensible idea. But Mario's got it here. What are you listening to in your headphones? Just like white noise. It's White noise? Thing. Yep. You not thought heavy metal could be the way forward? No, that was beforehand, that was a prep, but now it's just trying to blank out everything. Okay. Yeah. It's gone from heavy metal to white noise. That's evolution, uh, that is. Uh, you didn't want to go, Alistair, with, uh, with, with headphones? Uh, no, I did try them. However, I did a lot of testing with reaction times, and I think that uh, no headphones is better. But, you know, it's different for everyone. And the Crocs, whose idea was, was that? <laughs> I think that was uh, Charlotte's idea, and uh, thank you, by the way. Your idea? I'm, going, I'm, good, I'm just going over here. You're taking claim for the Crocs, yeah? You think this is a good thing? It was my idea, not Charlotte's. It was your idea. It was a joke. I wore Crocs to one of our team meetings. I said, oh, we should get Crocs. And then our teacher was like, oh, Crocs. And now we've got Crocs. Yeah, because you know that teachers are the only people on the planet who think that Crocs are cool. Yeah? We think Crocs are cool. Get yourself a pair of Crocs. Right, they're rocking the Crocs, yeah? <laughs> Interesting, the Crocs up against the Aussies. Oh, it's just like living in Darwin, isn't it? It's amazing. Right, so uh, are we ready down here, Oscar? Yeah, I'm filling for my country here. Um, we are ready with the cars. And you have 30 seconds to settle yourself in. Once again, best of order. You are magnificent for the first race. And when you're happy, we'll get going. Remember, it's the best overall time that we are looking for. And Nightingale need to be innovation to stand a chance of lifting the trophy. And away they go, and it is victory for innovation, ladies and gentlemen. Our knockout champions, commiserations, Alistair and Nightingale. Innovation, come with me. We've got a trophy to present. Mario, would you come with me as well? Come up this way and a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our knockout competition winners for 2023. Cross for each of you to stand on. Mario, can you go on?
you to the other end. Thank you very much indeed. And there's the Pirelli Trophy for our knockout winners. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for innovation. Thank you very much. You may leave the stage. Thank you. And Mario, lovely to see you. Thanks for coming. We move on to our second award of the night, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Best Newcomer Award, and it's supported by the Aston Martin Aramco Cognizant Formula One team. Uh, to present the award, a man who was a candidate for Best Newcomer Award last year, because it was his first season as team principal. Let's see how his second season is going. Please welcome Mike Crack. Um, Mike, come and have a little chat here. I know you were in F1 a long time ago, but last year was your, your first year as team principal. So you can really relate to what our newcomers are feeling when they get to the world finals for the first time. Yeah, I, I can relate uh, from uh, yeah, being out for so many years. Uh, to be honest, when I came back, the only thing that was the same was there was four wheels on the car. The rest was all changed, all <laughs> different, all much more involved than before. So, yeah, it felt like a newcomer, although I had done all these years before. But a difficult second season has turned into absolute smiles at Aston Martin. It's been absolutely brilliant. So what advice could you give to our competitors here today about turning a first year as team principal into an even better year and more better years to come in the future? How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think it's, uh, it, it, the whole thing is about great team effort. Uh, I, you see here there is a lot of, of, a lot of, uh, a lot of young, young people uh, and they are all working together in a team. I think that is the most important, that everybody plays his role in a team. Uh, there is no, no superstar in, in any kind of team. It's really important that every, everybody works together, every wheel goes into the other wheel and uh, this is what we have done at, uh, at Aston Martin uh, over, over last year, over this year um, and it's just a team, uh, team effort that, uh, that is rewarding and uh, yeah, we, have to, we have to try and do better to catch these guys over there. I you see Paul? Talking about Red yeah, Bull, not Alfred, talking about him. Yeah? No, I was talking about Paul. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, that's, but the thing is, you are catching up and you are closing that gap slowly but surely, but it's teamwork that makes the dream work, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. The, they are very good as well. That is, that is the biggest problem we have. So uh, we really have to work hard uh, to, yeah, first of all, to match and then to catch. Mike, so good to see you. I'll take the microphone. You've got some hands to shake, and we've got a trophy to present. But who are the nominees for Best Newcomer? Uh, Tom, Amy, you've got the details. And the nominations, we have... We don't have nominations for Best Newcomer. Do you not? Sis? I do not. Right. Well, in which case, then... I... Uh, I'll read, out the, uh, I'll read out the winners, because I was told you had some no, nominations. Crofty, I'll take this one. I'm sorry, it was my fault, but we're a team, and we've stepped up. Best Newcomer Award, as you know, uh, we have Lightfly. Uh, no, we don't have the, the nominations, sorry. Well, Crofty, in which I, feel, case, I feel like we're hindering you. Well, in which case, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be surprised to know that the winner of the Best Newcomer Award, and maybe next year we'll get someone a bit more experienced to host this award so we all know what's going on, uh, supported by Aston Martin Cognizant F1 team from Slovenia, is Lightfly! Come on up, Lightfly. Oh, light fly, congratulations. Welcome to the stage. Take some photos. Smile for our camera. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Our best newcomers for 2023. You may leave the stage now. And Mike Crack, thank you so much indeed to you and everyone at Aston Martin. Thank you, guys. You may go.
Right. That was the rehearsal, now we'll do it properly. Uh, it's the fastest car award next, ladies and gentlemen. This is supported by Mercedes-AMG Patronus F1 team, uh, of which, Amy Martin, you need to come up to the stage. Amy is a F1 in schools alumni, and she's a finance graduate as well, now working at Mercedes-AMG HPP. So, as you've got a microphone in your hand, what did you learn? from appearing in the world finals that you've put into practice now in the real world of F1 and a job working with Mercedes? Well, um, I mean, there are so many different aspects of this competition. There is so much to learn from kind of being involved in this competition. It's really difficult to pinpoint one specific skill that this competition gave me because it really did like round me as a person. I would say definitely confidence, the ability to think on my feet and the ability to overcome challenges as they come to you. As a lot of the teams know, we've had breakages on track. Um, and we've also had teams that have had a lot of disappointment. So it's kind of being able to be resilient and to learn from those and pick up and keep going. And when you stood at a world finals and when you were there with your team all those years ago, did you ever truly believe that you would end up in F1 one day? No, I say it was, it was it was absolutely surreal. The day I got the call from Mercedes HPV to tell me that I'd got the job, I just said, it's been seven years of wanting and waiting. And like, that was the moment. And I can say that when I um, was at the paddock in Austin and I met Nico Rosberg, and that was when I could say that I really wanted to be an F1. It was such an amazing electric atmosphere. And I think it's emanated in this room today and for the rest of the, this weekend that we've had. I absolutely felt the same the first time I met Nico Rosberg as well, I have to say. Uh, right, fastest car award then. Uh, it's a 3-2-1, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the fastest car is calculated by averaging the time set on Sunday and Monday in competition. Uh, so the positions are as follows. In third place, with an average time of 1.176 seconds from Australia, propulsion. <laughs> Don't worry about the music just yet. We'll get round to the music in a moment, but applause is always welcome. Our runners up from the United States with a 1.175, a prime racing. <laughs> and the winner, ladies and gentlemen, from China, into Cosmic! Into Cosmic had an average time of 1.157 seconds. So they absolutely blew away the competition with the fastest car. Welcome into Cosmic! Fantastic. Amy, would you like to go and stand on the cross and then everybody come forward a little bit? Thank you very much. Brilliant. Shuffle over a bit. That's it. Into Cosmic. And we'll post with some photos. What a brilliant effort. Into Cosmic, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed, you may go. Amy, thank you too. <coughs> digital Media is our next realm. It's the Digital Media Award that's supported by motorsport.com. Please welcome their F1 editor, John Noble. Hello, mate. Very well, thank you. Have a microphone. I'm not going to pass by the opportunity to have a chat with my old mate, John. Um, we've known each other for about 30 years, yeah? A long time, It's a long, long time. Come down the front so people can see you. Um, digital media 30 years ago wasn't really a, a thing, but it is now. It's, it's, it's shaped your world, certainly. Yeah, when I started, it was, uh, um, I, I think, luckily escaped typewriters, but it was just the start of computers, and you had this little tandy machine and you'd go to a hotel and you'd try to plug into the wall socket and be able to send like a thousand word piece and that would be the limit. But nowadays, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, the internet is how we live our life. 
Absolutely. I get most of my good stories from your, uh, your Twitter account, I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for that. So this award that motorsport.com um, uh, support is very much an award for the future. Get this right, you'll get the future right. Absolutely. And I think it's a, it's a growing area of influence. I mean, teams employ huge digital media teams now. Um, it's where you can make a massive influence. People are building careers on it. So it's an important platform for Formula One, and it's, and it's growing all the time. You look at F1's audience, it's being driven by digital media. Absolutely. Uh, I'll take the mic off you, John. Thanks for coming, mate. It's been brilliant to see you tonight. And it will be wonderful to find out who has won the Digital Media Award. I say this with trepidation as I turn to Tom and Amy, who should have some nominations. Sorry, just, just to double check, Crofty, you don't want me to announce the winners? No. Okay. No. All right. Let's go the with the nominees then. <laughs> From Saudi Arabia, we have Oryx. <laughs> From Germany, Cardium. And Scotland is Honeycomb Racing. Right, stand by with your social media accounts because you might want to tell the world that you're the winners if you come from Germany and you're Cardium. Ah, uh, come on up, Cardium. You're going the wrong way. Absolutely fantastic effort. A strong engagement, a creative approach, and a clear strategy for the way ahead, say our judges. Put your hands together as they make their way up the stairs. Cardium! Thank you. Come and stand uh, right here. Come and stand there. Come and stand there. And come and stand there. And if you go on the end, John, that will be fantastic. Well done to Cardium. Thank you, gentlemen. Time to go and tweet TikTok and Instagram what you've just done. You may leave. Thank you very much. And thanks, John. And motorsport.com. And as well as the trophy, our award winners also get a big goodie bag to take back with them as well. So uh, uh, personal recognition as well as something very nice to display in the school trophy cabinet. We move on to the Identity Award now. Uh, and who better to announce and support this award uh, than Scuderia Ferrari. Please welcome their senior performance engineer, Jock Clear. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, mate. Great to see you. Cheers um, very much. Thank you for coming again. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Um, you've been to quite a few of these, and I'm sure you've had a look round. Tell me what stands out for you this year. Um, well, I, I, certainly just watching the, the shoot-off on the stage there, the, the gaps are nothing, are they? And that's the level of competition. When you actually look round the walls, the amount of effort and the amount of passion that just comes out of what you see is incredible. Um, the years ago, and as you say, I've done a lot of these years ago, I would never really worry about coming here and answering questions because I know my stuff, I've been in F1 for a long time. Now I'm coming here thinking, I hope they don't ask tricky questions because some of these kids are really, really genned up. They really know their stuff. They're just showing, uh, you know, that the level just keeps getting better and better and, and us old guys really can't keep up. But as somebody who very much looks after the future at Ferrari and within the Driver Academy that you work with as well, um, is the trickier the question, the better? Does that then stand out to you and think, oh, I need to keep an eye on that person because they've, they've really got something? Yeah, I think, I think that's always the, the sort of the special ingredient you're looking for, that, that little bit glint in the eye, you know, that, that, that we all talk about, that you need to nurture, you know, and, and when you see people of this age getting really inspired, you need to make sure you fuel that fire because it can, it can burn out, you know, and, and you see it with drivers. If they don't get the opportunities, if they don't quite get the brakes, it really kills them because they just want to win. They want to be competitive. They know they can do it, but things get in their way. There are obstacles, and it's the same with the kids we see here. We've got to make sure that we're getting rid of those obstacles because that sort of passion, if you give them the, f the fuel and you just let them burn themselves, they'll just, they'll just come alight. And, and what we see in F1 now, you know, and, and we're now looking at teams that are 
closer and closer. You know, you've seen Aston Martin coming on strongly this year, and, uh, and everybody's enjoying a better and better level of competition. And that just comes from what these guys are doing here, getting people in, involved at a very early age and just fueling that fire, and it's just great to watch. Love it, and I love your passion too. <laughs> Jock, Thank thanks so much, my friend. I'll take that from you. You got some hands to shake. Jock Clear uh, with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to hand out the award, the Identity Award. Three teams waiting anxiously, but who are they? Nominations are K Impetus from Portugal, <laughs> Shaheen from Saudi Arabia, and Eclipse from the United Kingdom. And the winners of the Identity Award from Portugal, K Impetus. Congratulations to K Impetus for their clear, cohesive approach to design and brand usage across all elements the competition. Uh, well done uh, to you all. Come and take your place down here. Jock, if you can stand at the far end, that will be magnificent. Shuffle across a little bit. Absolutely fantastic. Put your hands together for K Impetus. Thank you very much, Jock. Thank you too. Sponsorship and marketing is a very important part of the Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals. Uh, this award supported by the MoneyGram Haas F1 team. Uh, to present the trophy on their behalf, please welcome the Project Director for F1 in Schools OBO, Annabelle Denford. Tom and Amy, we're cooking on gas now. Who are the nominees? Okay, from Mexico, we have Panteras Racing Preparatoria Panamericana. From Scotland, we have Honeycomb Racing. And from Saudi Arabia, Oryx. Three becomes one. Our winners of the Sponsorship and Marketing Awards from Scotland, Honeycomb Racing. Onto our stage. Steady, steady, steady. Honey, go racing. It's not all night, it's not a problem. Uh, if you can, make your way onto the crosses, please. Thank you very much. And you might need to shuffle along just a little bit. All right, please look at our photographers. Here. Right, innovative thinking is what we're all about next. This award supported by the BWT Alpine F1 team. And to present the trophy on their behalf, our chair of judges, Mr. Gary Anderson. We're going to have a chat in a minute. We'll have a chat a little bit later on, because we've got a lot to chat about. But for the moment, nominees, please. And the nominations are Oryx from Saudi Arabia. From North Macedonia, Arth Racing. And Vela Racing Team from Greece. Right. Three nominees, and I am really, really chuffed to announce this next winner. But I'm going to put my fingers in my ears because they are the loudest team here tonight from Saudi Arabia. It's Oryx! Down the front, congratulations. 
Stay there, stay there, stay there. And then all fall that way. Okay. Just go that way a little bit. Please. Right. You guys, you need to move this way a little bit, please. Thank you very much. Oh dear. Uh, the Project Prodigy, their book to onboard new teams and share learning with future generations. Went down really well with the judges, so congratulations, you're going the other way. You've got to go the other way. Sorry. Them's the rules. And that's what it's all about. I love the fact Oryx win, massive cheers, even bigger cheers from their fellow competitors from Saudi Arabia as well. That's brilliant support, and thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll see Gary in a little while. Um, the FIA Women in Motorsport Awards is next, uh, supported by the FIA Women in Motorsport Commission. Please welcome their Vice President for Asia Pacific, Lung Nien Lee. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely brilliant to see you. Cheers, thank you. Um, we need to move on with some nominees, I think, for the FIA Women in Motorsport Award. And the nominations are from India, Uja. From Saudi Arabia, Abeya. And from Greece, Athena Racing. And the winners for showing an awesome team spirit with so much positivity, energy, and a great sponsor of media communications from Greece, Athena Racing. is our next award. Uh, this is supported by Williams Racing. Uh, please welcome their sporting director, uh, Sven Smeet. Sven. Come on over, sir. Great to see you. Um, engineering has always been at the heart of uh, Williams. No surprise that you support uh, this award. Uh, what has caught your eye in terms of engineering here tonight? Well, there's been uh, quite a lot of new uh, engineering moves from our students. I, I, I visited, uh, well, not all the stands because it was a little bit too late, but I had a good look at uh, around 20, and it seems that the halo has brought some, some new innovative thinking. Some people were struggling with weight, so they had to reduce weight somewhere else. So yeah, it has been really good what I've seen. Isn't it great that uh, restrictions on regulations just inspire engineers for the future to be more and more creative. We see that in Formula One and we'll see that in F1 in schools as well, I think. Yeah, I think, I mean, to change regulations every year, uh, I think is a very good thing because it brings uh, innovative innov thinking from everybody here. Um, what was very surprising, a few of the students have told me maybe it's time to get some cost cap rules into this competition, which I was very surprised of because I know normally engineers don't want these kind of rules. All the cost cap does is force you to be more creative in your thinking and to actually iron out the problems before they get tested in the wind tunnel. We still see uh, some brilliant results. Sven, thanks so much for coming. I'll take the mic back and we'll hand out some awards, I think. The best engineered car, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got a 3-2-1 once again. So, our third place team, as chosen by the judges in the best engineered car award from the United Kingdom. Well done, Eclipse. Our runners-up, we've seen them on the stage already, from Germany, Cardium. And our winners, and the best engineered car from Australia, Propulsion. Thanks guys. And face our photographers. 
to you and Williams. You may leave the stage. That way. 50-50 <laughs> choice. I always get it wrong too. Um, award 10 is for Enterprise Portfolio. This is uh, supported uh, by a new partner to F1 in Schools, Qatar Airways. Please welcome their VP of Sales for Southeast Asia and Southwest Pacific, Jared Lee. Jared, thank you so much. Really great to see you. Thanks for coming along. Nominees, please. The nominations are Panteras Racing Preparatoria Panamericana from Mexico, Honeycomb Racing from Scotland, and finally, Recoil Racing from Germany. And the winner for the Enterprise Portfolio Award from Scotland, Honeycomb Racing. Energy from Honeycomb Racing. Welcome back to the stage. Thank you so much, too. It's been great to see you. You may leave the stage. Thank you very much. And we move on to the, the Project Management Awards, uh, which is supported by the Project Management Institute's Educational Foundation. Please welcome their Vice President for Social and Community Impact and Chief Operations Officer, Olivier Lazar. <laughs> Olivier. Thank you so much for coming along. Let me give you a microphone. Um, Thanks, David. Project management. Now, this is your first time at the Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals. Yeah. But project management is such a fundamental part of what we do here. So uh, your thoughts, please, about not just the award, but what you've seen. So project management is basically knowing how to organize things, how to work in a team, and understand why you're doing things. When you combine with three different elements, you can get anything done and it's foundational for any type of handovers so when we see what all of his teams have achieved it's amazing it's amazing because they have worked in teams they have achieved an incredible result and that, that really creates value for them for their families for their communities and it's really a value trigger for everyone so the more we can develop this kind of education, the more we can develop this kind of skills which they will be able to use in their academic and then in the future in their professional life, the better the world will be. Absolutely. What you learn and put into practice here benefits you for the rest of your lives. Olivier, thank you thank so you. much indeed. Great to see you. Um, don't know if the winners could just come and work for me and organize my life. That would be uh, rather handy. Uh, but we have some nominations, please. The nominations are Uja from India, Oryx from Saudi Arabia, and Aurora from Australia. Right. The Project Management Award goes to, from India, Uja. who showed effective project management throughout all aspects of their participation in this year's Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals. Congratulations to you. Come and stand this way. Let me project manage you over to this side. Stand right there. Thank you, Olivia. Right, we move on now to the Autodesk Pressure Challenge, uh, an award supported by Autodesk. Please welcome uh, from Autodesk, Conway Go and Ramesh Padale. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Good to see 
you again. Uh, right, hello. Nice to meet you for the first time too. Come and take centre stage and tell us about what is always a really keenly fought competition and part of our competition, the Autodesk Pressure Challenge. Absolutely, I'm just so amazed by the students, the amount of energy that they bring, the amount of passion that they bring as well. And more importantly, in terms of how they design and make, um, they have leveraged Autodesk generative design, AI and design in terms of pushing the boundaries of technology. So congratulations to once again to all the student winners. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Conway. I'll take the microphone from you. Uh, we have three nominations uh, for the Autodesk Pressure Challenge. Tom, would you like to do the honours? Yes, the nominations are, it's Osmos from China and Malaysia, <laughs> Wave Racing from Cyprus and Greece, and Aqua X from Singapore and Thailand. <laughs> or, the nominations for this award, not the collaboration award, are... <laughs> you see? You see, Tom in his spare time does a lot of stand-up comedy, yeah? And I'm being serious at this, he does a lot of stand-up comedy. And I said, do you want to tell us a joke? He said, no, I'll find humour somehow this evening. I don't know what's happened with our <laughs> scheduling here, and that's why I'm not part of F1 in school's team. Um, so, yeah, we've learned a lot today. I'll tell you what I'll do, right? I'll read out some nominations, and I'll announce the winner as well, because we do have three nominees for this. They, teams were challenged with creating a 3D model and renders of a futuristic F1 car. Uh, so the nominations were from Brazil, the Pocadores Racing Team, uh, from Nightingale, uh, from England, I should say, Nightingale, who we saw in our uh, track challenge, our knockout competition, and from Thailand, Asani as well. Now, we might have some images to put up on our screen, but what we definitely do have is a trophy uh, to present, and the award goes to the team from the Robert May School in England. It's Nightingale! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's what Nightingale achieved and what they came up with. That is pretty futuristic. That is absolutely wonderful. A 3D model and a render of a futuristic F1 car. You don't need wheels when you go back to the future. Yeah? These will be literally flying around the track. Absolutely fantastic. Come and stand right down here, Nightingale. The trophy's yours this time. Running through the last of my thoughts Standing on the edge of my tongue Everything I know will be gone in a minute And that's all right Running through right. the last of my thoughts Right, thank you very much and congratulations to Nightingale. And now... Uh, if Conway and Ramesh, you can stay with us on the stage, uh, we turn to the best international collaboration team. Tom, do you have any nominees? Do you know what, Crofty? I think I do. I've just uh, got the ground to uh, let me back up after <laughs> swallowing me there. Um, here we go. Osmos from China and Malaysia. Wave Racing from Cyprus and Greece. And Aqua X from Singapore and Thailand. <laughs> Thank you. In all seriousness, I'm amazed you two are still going after the four days that you've just had. You have been brilliant on the webcast and brilliant here in the ballroom. So thank you very much to your efforts. The winners, ladies and gentlemen, for best international collaboration team from Cyprus and Greece, Wave Racing!
well done. Thank you to our Best International Collaboration team and thank you, Conway. Great to see you again. Brilliant. Cheers. Now, Nose Cone Challenge is our next award. It's a brand new award uh, for 2023 and it's supported by F1 Manager. Um, our chair of judges, Gary Anderson, has been to the stage before, but now he's coming to the stage to have a chat with us as well. Gary Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. Your microphone, sir. Um, Gary, I I've been away for 12 months from F1 in schools. I turn my back, suddenly everything changes. We've got a halo. We we've got a little Diddy driver in the car as well. Um, you've rejigged the stopping system on the track, and we've got the nose cone challenge. What what's, what's been going on? Well, everything went in parallel, I suppose. We, we had a lot of damage whenever we just had the brushes or the tiles that we used to have. So. The nose cones were the first thing to uh, make impact. And the car down there is doing something in the region of 20 meters per second. So we don't have brakes in these cars. So um, it had to stop somehow. And unfortunately, the nose took the brunt of that. So we tried to create a, a situation where the teams would uh, bring a replaceable nose. And then it didn't really happen because it adds weight. But then we made a challenge just to see if we could achieve it. And in the meantime, we recreated the regulations to uh, make the cars visually look a little bit more like Formula One because after all we are, they are Armco F1 in schools. Um, and that included the halo and then we decided to use the halo as a stopping device as well. So it's all a big circle but we had a, a very good competition between the teams that did participate and uh, very impressive times I have to say. I mean a Formula One car and the guys down there would probably agree, 12 seconds, you'd be pretty happy with that change in the nose in an F1 car. We've got a few people you might need to employ because they're much quicker. <laughs> yeah, we'll tell you the times in a few moments on this, but they were pretty, pretty rapid. I have to say, I think the cars look absolutely stunning this year, which is testament to the work that's been put in, but also the allowance in the regulations for the cars to look like, you know, Formula One cars in real life. And to add a pilot and a, and a crash helmet puts even more areas of aero exploitation at the team's disposal. Well, it is really, yeah. I mean, you know, we need a new challenge. We've, we've created that new challenge. I'm really impressed by the cars that we've seen because it was a bit like Formula One when it changed for 2022. You know, all the teams had to adapt to a new set of regulations. Some blue teams got it fairly right to begin with, and some silver teams didn't quite get it as right as they should have done, and red teams even. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in general, you see the, the teams all meet up as the years go past. Um, and it's the same in F1 schools, you know, you, every year you learn something and just chatting to some of these guys that have been involved in the design of these cars, or guys and girls, um, pretty impressive people out there. So I think what I'd like to say is the world's in good hands because out of you 300, 400 people, um, there's a few people out there running the world that need replacing and you're the ones that are going to do that. So keep on doing what you're doing and I think we'll be in a better place in a few years time. I couldn't agree more. Gary, thank you so much. Lovely to see you again, my friend. Another that has worked tirelessly along with all of our judges uh, for this weekend. We thank you very much for your efforts. Right, it's a 3-2-1, ladies and gentlemen, for the Nose Cone Challenge. Um, in third place, with a time of 2.5 seconds, um, Brazil and Macuan Planalto. Our runners-up from Ireland in a time of two seconds, Catalyst Racing. But like a Sergio Perez pit stop, because I do believe he's had the fastest pit stop of 2023 on the F1 track, our winners with a time to change the nose cone of 1.78 seconds from Romania, Ford Solaritus. Our nose cone challenge supported by F1 manager from Romania, Ford Solaritus. Thank you so much and well done. Congratulations, come and stand on the cross here, right here. And then back up, that way, that way, that way. Keep going, keep going, keep going, done. Ford Solaritus, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, you may.
mate, go back to your seat. Right, FIA Scrutineering Award is next, supported by the FIA and Mititoyu. Please welcome the Asia Pacific Managing Director of Mititoyu, Mr. Takashi Matsuiki. Thank you so much for coming along. And thank you as well. That is a brilliant trophy to award tonight as a selection of metrology equipment that our teams are going to put to great use. It's a really gorgeous piece of engineering and a prize for our winners. But who are the winners? Let's have some nominations. Nominations are Cardium from Germany, Pocadores from Brazil, and Lightfly from Slovenia. And the winners of the FIA Scrutineering Award, supported by the FIA and Mitutoyu, from Brazil, Pocadores! <laughs> Congratulations, can I stand on the cross here? Excellent. Well done, congratulations. You might need to shuffle along a bit, everybody. Thank you. Pocadores, well done. <laughs> Fantastic. We get now to award number 16. It's the award for verbal presentation. Uh, here's someone that hands out verbals to two drivers on a Sunday afternoon from the Alfa Romeo F1 team, their head of race strategy, Ruth Boscombe. Good to see you. Have a microphone. And I say hand out verbals to your drivers. How, how often do you speak to your drivers during the course of a race? Never during the race. Never? No, no. We try and get all of that done beforehand and leave it up to the race engineers to, to actually speak on the radio. We've got, we've got one here, so you can talk to a race engineer next. When you do your race strategy, because this is really fascinating for a lot of our competitors here, how many different simulations do you go through on a Saturday night before you come up with the one that's going to get you the big points on a Sunday? If I told you that, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> So we, we run millions of different uh, simulations and uh, a lot of what we're doing is about understanding what sensitivities we have. So if you change one thing, how does that have an impact on race strategy? So when you actually get into the race and the situation changes, uh, you know how to react and you know how to adapt um, and also you know how to communicate uh, that situation to your drivers and to the rest of the team. Excellent. And you came into Formula One through maths, didn't you? Maths was your, was your big thing? Yeah. Yeah, at Cambridge. Is that, is a grasp of maths absolutely essential or when we're giving advice out to, to our competitors tonight, are there other jobs and other areas where maths is not the most important thing? Well, I think for strategy, counting yeah, that is helps. up there. Um, obviously, number of laps and uh, how long the pit loss is. 62, is not quite, 61 this week, remember it's that. It's 62 this week because we've changed the track length. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's changed this year. Yeah, so for, for our world, numbers are very important. Um, and also communication because uh, there's nothing with a good strategy unless you can actually communicate that plan. Um, so the, the drivers in the car actually know know what to do. So, a bit of both. Excellent. Uh, Ruth, so good to see you. Thanks for supporting F1 in schools again. Um, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we have some nominations for the Verbal Presentation Award. We do indeed. The nominations are Recoil Racing from Germany, Nightingale from England, and Eclipse from the United Kingdom. And the winners of the Verbal Presentation Award, supported by the Alfa Romeo Formula One team from Germany, Recoil Racing.
fantastic recoil. That's a brilliant trophy as well. I like that. Recoil racing, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations and well done. Research and development is where we head next. This award is supported by McLaren Racing. Please welcome their principal race engineer, Jose Manuel Lopez. Come on in. Uh, research and development is what it's all about, isn't it? Um, start with a good car, make it better. Start with a bad car, make it better. And it's all about the research and the development as the season goes on. Exactly. Uh, I think we, in our team, we know how to start with a bad car and make it better. I think we, uh, we did a good step this year, and uh, that's um, a proof of what is uh, Formula One now. Uh, try to improve, try to find new ways to develop your car, the way you work, review the work you do and try to improve it every day. And that's something that you guys uh, will do in the future. And nowadays as well, I'm sure that you do with your teams. Just review the job that you do with your cars and make them better. We put our awards into different categories, but I see with research and development, project management is essential. Communication is essential too, because there's no point having a good idea, not communicating it or structuring how you put it into practice. Yeah, absolutely. I think part of uh, the communication in a Formula One team with so many people involved is essential. And it goes from the driver through the race engineer and to all the people they support in us in the factory. There's a lot of them. And uh, not only there, it's as well the marketing people and the sponsorships and so on. That's so it's basic uh, in our world nowadays. Fantastic. And well done for the research and development that's gone into making your car a lot better this season as well. Jose, great to see you. Uh, my friend, nominations, please. From propulsion, oh, from Australia, propulsion. <laughs> from Germany, Cardium. And also from Germany, Recoil Racing. Okie dokie then, the Research and Development Award goes to, and we've just seen him up on the stage from Germany, Recoil Racing. <laughs> Time to come back again. It's another award for this evening. The team from Erlangen in Germany. Well done, Recoil Racing. Now you should know where to stand by now. Awards left to present, ladies and gentlemen, before our 3 2 1, and we crown our Aramco F1 in Schools World Champions for 2023. And our next award is the Chair of Judges Recognition of Achievement Award. It's supported by Oracle Red Bull Racing, whose Chief Engineer for Car Engineering is Mr. Paul Monaghan. Award, ladies and gentlemen, not one but two from our wonderful Red Bull Racing team. Zoe Chilton with us too. <laughs> Zoe, I'll come to you in a moment, but I'm going to have a little chat with Pedals as well. You said something recently that struck a chord with me, and I thought we'd discuss this as a really sound piece of advice from our Was it politically correct? <laughs> it was politically correct. It's a good awesome. start. Stop supporting West Ham, they're rubbish, right? You said, when asked why... It's correct. We, it's true. You asked, when asked why Red Bull was so successful this year, you said, it's very simple, our weaknesses are stronger than our competitors' weaknesses. Yeah. Nothing is perfect, but our weaknesses are better. And I think that's a really simplified, brilliant way of looking at any project that you start, because nothing's ever going to be totally perfect, and you have to live with it. Well, it's true. If you... Uh, you know, our car understeers and oversteers just the limits are slightly higher than some of the opposition, so we're privileged. Our engine is super strong. I'd say we've probably got one of the best drivers, and uh, his teammate yeah, is... having a great season. He's having a wonderful season. He's <laughs> second in the Drivers' Championship. 
And the other one's doing okay, isn't it's he? Not bad. So we've got a strong driver lineup, good car. Um, teamwork is, is an essence, as everyone here will, will have seen. And uh, we're very privileged, aren't we? So we should enjoy it while the sun's shining on us. Mm. And it is very much shining. Zoe, is that the way to be successful? Not just in Formula One, but in life. Keep it simple. I think that's really solid advice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, actually getting here, being in the room here today, you've had to go into some extreme detail and do some very complicated things. Today, enjoy yourselves. Like, this event, this experience is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Keep that simple and remember how cool this was and what you want to do next, and this is going to get you there. Sebastian Vettel, I think, once said when he won his fourth title in a row, enjoy these moments, they might not last forever. I bet he wishes he was coming back to Red Bull now, because it seems at the moment these moments are going to carry on forever He'd have and ever. to race Max, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would, wouldn't he? Ooh. That'd be fun. For a while. Who'd, who'd win? No comment. <laughs> I've put my money on the Dutchman. Um, Paul, you come back time and time again to F1 in schools, uh, and I see the smile on your face whenever you see what our students have achieved year in, year out. I s you draw from the enthusiasm, people ask you questions. Fortunately, none of them have stumped me yet, but there'll come a time, won't there? <laughs> um, you see their achievement, their determination, but it's actually what they achieve as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's stunning to see, so congratulations to all of you that got this far. Well done for entering in the first place and taking that leap of faith. And uh, don't give up. Just keep on pushing yourself. And uh, whatever happens, just remember what your goals are and you'll get there. Love it. Paul and Zoe from Red Bull Racing, thanks so much. Great to see you. Zoe, thanks for coming as well. Um, our chair of Judges Recognition of Achievement Award has three nominations. Who are they? It does indeed. Uh, the nominations are Sidewinder from the United Arab Emirates, Photon Racing from Poland, and Team Infinity Racing from India. Right then, our winners of the Chair of Judges Recognition of Achievement Award from India, Team Infinity Racing. Team Infinity Racing, who produced a textbook for future F1 in schools participants to teach the concepts of aerodynamics to consider for car design and therefore left a legacy for future generations as well. Zoe, if you wouldn't mind standing on that cross, and then no, no, this way, this way, this way, this way, pull on that cross like that. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, well done. Right, next, our Pit Display Award. This is uh, supported by Scuderia Alpha Tauri. Please welcome their Head of Sporting Direction, Mr. Marco Peroni. Now, Marco, welcome, welcome, welcome. Not only is Marco sporting the goodie bag here that uh, the team are going to get, but uh, a trophy that's a very special trophy to hand out. Take us through this and hold the mic up nice and close. Yeah. Uh, good evening, guys. First of all, uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, we wanted to be a little bit unconventional uh, this, uh, this time, and uh, we have a special uh, award for the P Display Award. Can you, can you help me? If I hold that. Thank you. Yep. Tell us more about it. About it. Yeah. What is this? So. Wow. For the winner, that's, um, as I said, it's a little bit unconventional, but we wanted to give uh, the opportunity to wish a great recovery to Daniel Ricciardo, and this is his, uh, his overall, and this is the award for, for tonight. So, I. I really wish him a great recovery, and I know that uh, you, will do, you will do as well with uh, this, uh, this evening and, uh, this, uh, and this award. I think that is an absolutely fantastic uh, award to win there. That will look great in any trophy cabinet, in any school, but there only can be one winner. So who are the nominees? 
Well, I really do wish it, wish it was me, but it's not. Uh, nominations are Vic Sino from Malaysia, <laughs> Kinnery Racing from Thailand, and Oryx from Saudi Arabia. And Daniel Ricciardo, by the way, is here in Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. I saw him the other night at the airport. You'll be glad to know that whilst he continues his recovery, the smile is as wide as it ever was. He has not lost that smile, uh, and that, I hope, will be the case forever as well. We'll see Daniel back on the track, I am sure, as soon as he is possibly fit. But for the Pit Display Awards, the winners who are taking Daniel's race suit back to... Malaysia Vixino! Our photographer's almost flattered for the chase to the stage. Come on in, come on in, Vixino. We have a cross for you right here. Can you stand there? Ladies, please. Thank you so much. And getting in the obligatory selfie as well, why not? Ladies and gentlemen, Big Cino! Congratulations, thank you so much. You may leave. And thank you to Scuderia Alpha Tauri uh, for that amazing, amazing award. Now, our final award before we announce the 3 2 1. It's the Sustainability Award. It's one for the future and is supported by Formula One. Please welcome their Director of Innovation and Digital Technology, Mr. Pete Samara. <laughs> Come on up, sir. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Um, sustainability. Um, what are you doing at F1 in terms of sustainability and how does that impact what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I think it's very clear to everyone that we're really serious about sustainability. Every project we start starts with sustainability at the beginning, really. How do we build projects that work in the UK rather than get on a plane? Um, every single project we, we start um, starts with that, that thread, really. And I think one of the things we've done in the last few years is build an operations centre in the UK. So we're not travelling the same people or the kit we, we used to travel before. And I think, looking at some of the students here, they've looked at that properly. How do we think about sustainability from the start of the project, from recycling, reusable uh, materials, so everything we do, actually. And if you want to know how F1 in schools mirrors the real world, what Peter's saying is that you don't freight tons and tons and tons of unnecessary equipment and people around the world in the same way that each and every one of our competitors has had to bring their pit displays as part of their hand luggage and their hold luggage on the planes. No freighting allowed whatsoever for F1 in schools this year, which, by the way, is a mega, mega achievement for you all, and you should be really proud of what you've done with that because it does make a difference. You think one person can't make a difference, but with a team and a bigger team and a worldwide team, of course we can. Yeah, absolutely. And I think some of the amazing things that people have done, the, the kids here have, have done a fantastic job of different ways of tackling that challenge. You know, how do you... I think one of the children, the, the kids, youth, I don't know what the right word is, but um, talked about 360 sustainability. How do we reuse, for the next year's team, some of the equipment they've used? And that's quite, quite good thinking, actually. Yeah. Ha not to throw it in a bin you know, and help someone else. So sustainable and helpful, which is good. Pete, thank you very much indeed. Great to have you with us, and thanks for your support in this one. I cannot wait to hear the nominees. OK, then. From Australia, we have Team Dawn. From Scotland, we have Honeycomb Racing. And from Mexico, Panteras Racing Preparatoria Americana. Now, the Sustainability Award, ladies and gentlemen, goes to the team with the longest name here this evening from Mexico, Panteras Racing Preparatoria Panamericana. Congratulations to Banteras Racing. 
Well done, guys. Absolutely brilliant. You can stand on the cross there. Oh, no, don't go any further. Shuffle back. That's it. Right there. That would be magnificent. And these guys are extremely passionate and massively creative in a range of socially sustainable activities. Well done. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you very much. You may leave the stage. Excellent. And that brings us then, ladies and gentlemen, to our three, our two, and our one for this year. We are almost at a time where we're going to crown our Aramco F1 in Schools world champions for 2023. But before we do that, I want to bring a man up to the stage, a man that I could say many, many things about, and every single one of them would be true, because without him, we wouldn't be here tonight. The CEO, the founder, and the man who's inspired us all at F1 in Schools, Mr. Andrew Denford. All yours. Thanks, Good to see you, mate. Wow. Thanks, Crofty. What a four days. This has been our biggest ever, ever event. And uh, we've had a wonderful time. I'm sure you all had. It's our 18th world final. I've said it before, 68 teams, 68 magnificent teams. And uh, I think you can all agree from the pit displays, the cars that you've seen, and just the whole raft of engineering and the judging that you've had to cover. What a fantastic bunch of people, what a great bunch of teams you all are. You all deserve to be here and I think we can give you a massive round of applause. Well done all of you. You are truly on the path to greatness without a doubt and uh, we know you're following the, 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 the likes of Amy and Sam and, and Vince who've been here helping us into Formula One. Can I just say a massive thank you to Tom and uh, to Amy and to Oscar and Vince for putting on 700 plus races without fault. Phenomenal, Tom. Thanks so much. Will you come back next year? Our judges, can you all stand up, please? You deserve a massive round of applause. Some have had to leave and go home. 80 judges, more judges than we had students in our very first World Finals back in 2004. And of course, we couldn't do this without our partners either. Um, we've got Project Management Institute Education Foundation, thanks so much. Formula One, of course. Thank you, Pete, for coming tonight. Chris, great to see you here. Uh, Qatar Airways, uh, Frontier, of course, uh, F1 manager, Singapore Tourism Board, thank you for your support. The Institute of Engineering and Technology, you'll see David Lakin on stage, and of course, Mitu Toyo, and of course, Autodesk. Thank you so much. But of course, without our title partner, Aramco, we couldn't do that either. A big thank you to all our partners. If you can put your hands together, please. So this has, hasn't happened overnight. This has taken 12 months of planning. Um, the, the actual detail that goes into this is incredible. And I've got to thank Dave Howes and the F1 in Schools team for pulling this together. I'm not going to name names because I'll forget somebody. And our team at Idiom behind here, which is like Starship Enterprise behind. It's incredible what they do. They produce a faultless event. Massive, massive thank you and a big round of applause, please, to all the team. So, you've all got another exciting couple of days ahead. Tomorrow we've got to get 700 people down for a pit lane walk. So, fingers crossed that's going to go according to plan. And then we're going to walk back up the pit lane after the photographs taken at the bottom of the main straight. And we're going to have our winners and nominees teams going into the Formula One garages to get close up and personal with the F1 cars. And hopefully uh, our uh, presenters today will be there to meet you as well. And then, going fast forward to the 3-2-1, 
The world champions will get paddock access for the weekend. This is courtesy of Stefano Dominicali. And uh, on Saturday at five o'clock, we'll have three, two, one on the Formula One podium just before, 30 minutes before FP2. So there'll be a full grandstand there to play the national anthem of our world champions. So the final goodie bag for you all, or for our world champions, will be grid access on Sunday as well. And I can't wait for that. That's my thrill of the year. So fantastic. Great to have you all here. Thanks so much for coming. And I just can't wait to see how we go on with the 3 2 1. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Grid access on Sunday for our world champions. 342 races I've done, Andrew. I've been on the grid twice. Guess I should have been a little more clever when I was younger, and I might have actually got on the grid a little bit more often. That is an absolute honor, um, and I can't wait to see you guys uh, from afar enjoying yourself on the grid as well. But let's announce our third place team and our runners up before we deal with our champions. Our third place is supported by the Institution of Engineering and Technology. Please welcome their head of education, safeguarding and education policy, David Lakin. David, thank you so much for coming back to F1 in Schools. Great to see you. Our third place team then, supported by the Institution of Engineering and Technology, are from England, Nightingale. Congratulations. Rocking the crops. Nightingale. Many, many congratulations to you. Big round of applause, please, for Nightingale. Take your place on our podium. Well done to Nightingale. And we move on to our runners up. For 2023, our second place is sponsored by the Singapore Grand Prix. Please welcome to present the award, the F1 in Schools in-country coordinator here in Singapore, Mr. Terry Lim from Master Rain. <laughs> Terry, take the trophy. Our second place supported by the Singapore Grand Prix, our runners-up for the Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals 2023 come from Australia, Propulsion! Congratulations, Propulsion, our runners up. And you can wave the flag as high as you wish while our photographers get some more pics and some memories for you to share with the rest of the world. And we move on then to our world champions. It's time to crown our winners then. The world champions will be joining us all at the F1 circuit this weekend, as Andrew has just said. Uh, they'll be on the F1 grid before the race on Sunday. Uh, more importantly, maybe for the future, they'll also receive a bursary scholarship to UCL Mechanical Engineering. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome Khalid Zamil, the Public Affairs Vice President from our title sponsor, Aramco, to address our world finalists. <laughs> Uh, you have a handheld or a lectern, it's yeah, up to you. let's do this. Let's Thank you very it. much. It's truly exciting to be here with everyone today at the Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals. 
I must say that going through tonight's program, seeing all of the awardees, I just wanted to congratulate everyone for making it this far. I know that we're all very impatient to know who's going to go on the number one platform, but just bear with me with a second. What I wanted to take a minute to acknowledge is the role of the parents and the teachers for supporting our finalists, supporting our participants that have made it so far. Andrew. And uh, because you are all champions for participating in the world finals, I just want to share some statistics that were shared with me earlier. About 1.8 million young people have wanted to participate in this from 29,000 schools worldwide from 58 countries. This is, and you guys have made it so far, so big, big congratulations to all of you. Yeah. Um, I know that it was not easy to make it here. We saw the video with the blood, sweat, and tears, and I know that there was a lot of innovation, grit, and creativity, and these are values that we share with you as well. Myself at Aramco and sure, all the other sponsors. And this is something that we carry very deeply. Another important thing is we are keenly interested in STEM education. In STEM education, when we talk about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, this is what has made our world today and will make our world for the future. There's a lot of bright young people in the world, and including all of you here, that are gonna be the designers and engineers of our future. We need you to shape that future. So I would wish you the best of luck on your journeys and hope that your participation at this edition of Aramco F1 in Schools World Finals will inspire your success. I finally, I wanna thank you, Andrew, for all the support and wish the best team to win. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Khalid Zamil. Right, I'm a bag of nerves now. It's time to crown our champions. The judges have made their decision and it's time to announce who will be walking away with our trophies tonight, who will receive that scholarship, the invitation to the F1 grid on Sunday and the bragging rights for the rest of their lives as they are declared the Aramco F1 in Schools World Champions for 2023. They are... Recoil Racing! of Germany.
Recoil Racing, if I might, for just one moment, have a bit of a conversation with you here. Um, can you put into words how you're feeling right now? <laughs> no, I think I'm shaking too much to even grasp words. <laughs> um, I don't think we really expected that. We're unbelievably happy and we thank everybody so much that brought us here and supported us on our journey. Let's talk about that journey. How long have you spent? How many late nights, early mornings, weekends? How much time and effort has gone into this? I, I can't even imagine how much. I don't know. It was so many all-nighters, so much time, so many weekends, so much time spent in school where others had holidays. But I think it was really worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's not been, not been a bad week, has it, at all. Um, did you believe that you would be standing here on top of the podium? I would have never imagined it, never imagined it. I, I, was, I was thinking third place, oh, we're, we're not going up here anymore. But I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And who would you like to thank at this moment? Who's capable of speech to do some thank yous? We really want to um, say thank you to all our sponsors, to our school, especially our principal and our supervisors. Thank you so, so much. And also our families. This is really like a once in a lifetime experience. And I think we'll definitely never forget that. A once in a lifetime experience that is going to change your lives forever, I'm sure. Ladies and gentlemen, our champion for 2023, Recoil Racing! It's raining gold, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to Nightingale. Congratulations to Propulsion 2 and our Aramco F1 in Schools World Champions for 2023 once again, Recoil Racing! And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our F1 in Schools World Finals for 2023. Uh, thank you to everyone who's watched via our webcast. Thank you to our partners, Aramco, Formula One, Denford, the Project Management Educational Foundation, to Mitutoyu, F1 Manager, our official airline partner, Qatar Airways, to Autodesk, the FIA, the Institution of Engineering and Technology, the University College London, Singapore Grand Prix, and the Singapore Tourism Board. That is it for 2023. We will be back. In 2024, let the celebrations begin. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Good night.